let the record reflect. We have uh, reconvened virtually with all council members present. Also present are um, Business Administrator Ray Cody, CFO Jim Burnett, Michael Plessier, our uh, legal representing uh, our legal team, both uh, Matt Giacobi and Marina Steinley. And um, this is our tradition over the last couple months has been um, reconvening after the 7 p.m. shout out to the front line, but today is a Wednesday, so with a shout out uh, did not happen tonight, but um, again, we'll, we'll do our new tradition of uh, re recognizing our unsung heroes and then go into the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, of course, Monday was Memorial Day, which is why we're meeting today. And I wanna follow that up with a shout out to all our residents who took time on Monday to take their minds off of the pandemic and the resulting lockdown and the, the feeling of sacrifice they have made to thank those who truly have made a sacrifice for us, those who have fought and gave their lives for our freedom. So thank you for all those out there that took the time on Monday to recognize it. And now to uh, Council President Carmela Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to give a shout out um, to one of the hardworking committees of the Borough of Madison. That committee is the Patriotic Celebration Committee. And that committee consists of 11, 11 members from various uh, branches of the service who have served their country in Korea, Vietnam, and Iraq. The committee is responsible for the Memorial Day Parade and often starts planning in January. Because of the pandemic, it was decided that they would not hold the parade and the memorial service is held at James Park and the remembrance ceremony at, at Harley Dodge. The pandemic did not stop them and the red, white, and blue bunting was hung at Hartley Dodge and the crosses representing each war were lined up on the lawn of Hartley Dodge. And they, and they proceeded to have a small but very ex, uh, effective moving ceremony at Condorso Park, along with the members of the American Legion. The ceremony was live streamed on Facebook and you can still see it on rosenet.org. So I, I, I invite you to take a look at it. It was, it was a lovely ceremony. And of course, thank you to Michael Pelessier for working with the two groups to make this a special day of remembrance. Lou Amarato and Russ Brown for all of their help to get all of this coordinated. And I want to say a special thank you to the members of the committee and the American Legion who once again proved the meaning of being true uh, patriots. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Austri. Oh, thank you, Mary, Mayor. Um, I'd like to do a shout out to our churches. Um, during this time of pandemic, um, many of our residents um, have been, you know, experienced not only physical but emotional challenges and so i want to thank the church churches for opening their virtual doors to give our residents a place of hope and support in these trying times thank you maureen the motto of seton hall preparatory school is hazard set forward always forward tonight i'd like to recognize the efforts of brady o'sullivan Brady and his family live here in Madison, and he attends Seton Hall Prep, where he's a rising senior. When Brady heard about Madison students eligible for subsidized lunches needing additional support for weekend meals, he started a GoFundMe page. The initial aim was to raise $1,856 in honor of the founding of the Prep. The site has been live for less than a week and has already raised $3,642. Brady has teamed with Co Joe Colangelo, the CEO of Boxcar Grocery, to help deliver groceries to families in needs. The boxes contain fresh produce, eggs, milk, and other essential foods. These are distributed to families that can demonstrate food insecurity. The subsidized lunch program ends on June 12th, making this effort even more important. Our neighbors are our heroes. They are ordinary people doing extraordinary things. In the words of an old hymn, whatsoever you do for the least of my brethren, then you do unto me. Thank you, Brady, and all of our heroes for seeing a need and stepping up to be part of the solution. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, John Hoover. 
Muted. John, you're muted. I don't understand that. <laughs> I am pleased to recognize and honor the Madison Chamber of Commerce for its consistent, persistent, and creative support of businesses, particularly small to medium-sized businesses. Founded in 1943, the Madison Chamber of Commerce is a self-sustaining, voluntary, not-for-profit organization of business owners and professionals. The group's purpose is to promote the economic welfare of its members and the borough of Madison as a whole. The chamber has a major role in many programs in the borough. Taste of Madison, Farmer's Market, Fire Extinguisher Program, Focus on Foot Traffic, Christmas Tree Ornaments, Gift Check Program, Easter Fun Fest, Ladies Night, Camp Fair, Nautilus Placemats, the GoFundMe Grant Program, and more. As the pandemic progressed, the chamber increased its meetings to twice per month to ensure businesses have the latest information that will impact them and that it is the right information. In addition, the chamber keeps business owners engaged, interested, creative, and contributing. There is no doubt in my mind that through this effort and that of others in our wonderful community that we will come through this with a great deal of success. All of this continues even while the executive director is on self furlough. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Deb. I'd like to give my shout out this week to all the restaurants in town. Not only have they become very creative in their pickup, take curbside delivery, got a great box from Bottle Hill Tavern this weekend for Memorial Day weekend. Um, we got like three meals out of it, but they've also been contributing to the flag group um, and helping with those deliveries. Flag is, for those that don't remember, is the group that is frontline, frontliners um, group too, sorry, to, um, help provide them with food and they've been raising money and using the businesses in Madison, Chatham and Florham Park um, to provide it. But our, the restaurants make the food, donate the, make the food and donate their time to go take it over to wherever the various places are, including, and I think I got all of them. I apologize if I didn't, Bottle Hill Tavern, Tino's, Shanghai Jazz, Madison Bagel, Rocco's, Main Street Suds, Tony Boyd, Central and Main, CJ's Deli, Chef Lauren and La Rosa Chicken. Um, and again, they've been great and they take care of all their donuts, the donuts, the donating of the time. Crowley's Cupcakes has worked with Junior Flag to do midweek deliveries. Um, you can buy for five bucks, 12 bucks, I'm sorry, and they'll deliver anywhere in Madison and you can send six cupcakes, six mini cupcakes to somebody. So thank you to our restaurant. Thank you. And Rachel. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to shout out Joe Colangelo, who uh, Councilwoman Byrne um, mentioned earlier, but this is a special spotlight for Joe and his creativity in, in reinventing his business boxcar. Now that Madison commuters are, are not buying bus tickets or reserving private parking spaces during the workday, Joe has pivoted to keep boxcar viable and to serve Madison residents in a unique and truly inventive way for the pandemic era. He started with weekly distribution of produce boxes with timed contactless pickup, and then continued to diversify Boxcar's offerings from there. Over 500 families each week pick up boxes of fruit and vegetables, grocery staples, and more, now including make your own pizza kits from Romanelli's, fresh Long Island oysters, and Madison favorites, Crowley cupcakes. 102 of the families picking up groceries each week are families on the free and reduced, reduced school lunch program who receive their produce boxes for free um, thanks to the tremendous generosity of an anonymous Madison donor. Joe provides that food at his cost to stretch the benefits of that donation. This Friday marks Boxcar's first drive-in movie, a sold-out showing of Young Frankenstein. And most remarkably of all, to me, you can now order an above-ground swimming pool for home delivery. Choose from three models on the Boxcar website. This was really <laughs> astonishing to me. And so I just want to send a shout out to Joe for his creativity in keeping Madison residents fed, entertained, and cool in these trying times. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you for all our heroes. And to uh, recognize our heroes in all of America, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. United States, United States, States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Um, and now for uh, approval of minutes, can I have a motion for the uh, special budget minute, meeting minutes of March 2nd, 2020? So moved. Second. Any, uh, any discussion? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Get me back on screen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion for the regular minutes of April 13th, 2020. So moved. Second. Any uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And for the executive minutes of April 13th, 2020, a motion? So moved. Second. These have already been discussed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a uh, mo uh, motion for the minutes of the special meeting, May 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Welcome all. And for all those that are uh, home uh, following us virtually, um, just a uh, thank you for all the shout outs. Um, Rachel, just one adjustment to yours. It's uh, The Princess Bride is the uh, movie. Not <laughs> the, the Young Frankenstein is one of my all time favorites. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Um, I, I do want to uh, recognize a few of our, uh, two more of our residents that we lost in the last um, two weeks. Uh, Pauline Falcone, lifelong Madison resident, passed away at her home on uh, Thursday, May 21st. She was 90 years old. She was born in Naples, Italy on March 3rd, 1930. She and her family emigrated to the United States when she was seven years old and settled in Madison, where she lived ever since. She was a graduate of Madison High School, eventually marrying her beloved husband, the late Vincent Falcone, the superintendent for the Madison Public Works Department for a long time. They were married for 50 years. The couple remained in Madison from their marriage all the way to now to be close to the family. She was the manager of family business, Artelinos, until the business was sold. She was a kind, loving, very giving person. She never missed a birthday. Took every chance to correspond with people whenever she could. And in, in my desk, mayor's desk, I have two notes from uh, Pauline Falcone. So uh, beautifully uh, written and uh, really touching. So that I, I can tell you firsthand that she loved to send a note and uh, was always kind. She will be greatly missed by all who knew and loved her. Also, one of... Uh, Remember Mary Campbell, also 90, who died at her home on May 15th. She was born in Irvington, lived in Madison for 64 years. She summered in Seagirt for 70 years of her uh, life, uh, enjoying the beach, the boardwalk, or, or her front porch. She graduated from Columbia High School in Maplewood, where she met her beloved husband, William Campbell III. Um, and she went on to graduate from Skidmore College in 1951. Before retirement in 2000, Mary worked for the Madison Public Library for 25 years, a perfect job because of her love of re reading. She was a member of the First Pre Presbyterian Church of New Vernon, Madison Thursday Morning Club, the AAUW, and the Skidmore Alum Alumni Association. She is survived by her devoted children, William, Cynthia, Nancy, Linda, and Frederick. And uh, she's also survived by two adoring grandchildren. Let's take a moment to remember Pauline Falcone and Mary Campbell, and all those who also have passed away in the last two weeks. Thank you. And an announcement before I move on to uh, proclamations. Um, in order to best serve our residents, we have returned to full staffing on site in Hartley Dodge and ended modified schedules for the police and fire departments. And uh, just a reminder to everyone to give our staff the safest possible work environment access to Hartley Dodge is limited. So we're asking residents to try to do as much work as possible online or through the mail. If you do come in, please follow the signage to the court violations window where we're conducting all of our face to glass to face business. So uh, we are back to full staff. I thank for the dedication of all our um, employees who serve our residents. And we're now going to bring on uh, there. Okay. 
Nancy and Gina, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this is an honor to, uh, for the second year in a row, to recognize uh, Pride Month and uh, Nancy and Gina, who many will recognize from Madison High School, are here to uh, accept this proclamation. Um, and so let me uh, share this. Whereas our nation was founded on the principle of equal rights for all people, and some of the most inspiring moments in our history have arisen from the various civil rights movements that have brought one group after another from the margins of main to the mainstream of American society. And whereas in the movement towards equal rights for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer, known as LGBTQ people, an historic turning point occurred 51 years ago on June 28, 1969 in New York City with the onset of the Stonewall riots. During these riots, the LGBTQ citizens rose up and fought against discriminatory criminal laws that have since been declared unconstitutional. And whereas all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights, and the LGBTQ individuals and their allies have an measurable impact on cultural, civic, and economic success of our country, and whereas the Borough of Madison is committed to supporting the vi visibility, the dignity, and equality for LGBTQ people in our diverse community, and whereas while society at large increasingly supports LGBTQ equality, it is essential to acknowledge the need for education and awareness remains vital. And whereas the nation was founded on the principle that every individual has infinite dignity and worth, and whereas celebrating Pride Month brings awareness and provides support and advocacy for Madison's LGBTQ community, and is an opportunity to take action and engage in dialogue, to strengthen alliances, build acceptance and equal rights and whereas the rainbow flag widely recognizes as a symbol of pride, inclusion and support for social movements that advocate for the LGBTQ community and its society. Now, therefore I, Robert H. Conley, mayor of the Borough of Madison on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim the month of June, 2020, Pride Month in the Borough of Madison in support of the LGBTQ community to recognize all LB LGBTQ residents whose influential and lasting contributions to our neighborhoods make Madison a vibrant community to which to live work and visit. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you, Mayor Conley and the Madison Council for this proclamation of inclusivity honoring Pride Month in Madison. I have been the moderator for Madison High School's GSA for 13 years now. Our GSA's objectives are directly in line with this proclamation. Mainly, our members are a human rights advocacy group that promotes a safe and inclusive environment for students and for staff where safety, inclusivity, and diversity are always valued. Our GSA partners with supportive administrators, parents, and other community members to accomplish our objective to promote and encourage acceptance for all people, including those of diverse gender expression and sexual orientation. I look forward to walking around the streets of downtown Madison during Pride Month and to see those symbolic rainbow flags flying proudly. Thank you again, Mayor Conley and the Madison Council. I would also like to say thank you to Mayor Conley and the Madison Council. For the past 11 years, we've lived, worked, and raised three kids here. Madison has always been welcoming and a safe space for us, and for that, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for much, so much for joining us, all your work. Thank, thank you. you. And now we're gonna welcome Teresa Turco. She's a member of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. There she comes. Hi. Welcome, Teresa. Thank you. And just uh, and she will be accepting this uh, proclamation. I just want to say a few comments before we start. You know, over the two two month last two months, we have sacrificed so much to slow down the spread of COVID nineteen, and with the actions we've taken, the curve is flattening and lives are being saved. Wouldn't it be great if we could do the same with the battle against gun violence? And the answer is yes, we can. And we had a pl planned an event uh, with Mother's Demand Action that would have taken place on the steps of Hartley Dodge uh, 
this coming uh, week, but uh, obviously we had to postpone that. But uh, I think we can push for re just as the effort we put into COVID fighting COVID-19, if we push for reforms to gun laws, respecting the Second Amendment, we can help keep weapons away from dangerous people. So on behalf of the, myself and the Borough Council, let me present you with this uh, proclamation. Whereas every day, 100 Americans are killed by gun violence, on average, there are nearly 13,000 gun ho homicides every year. And whereas Madison or Americans are 20 times more likely to be killed with guns than people in other developed countries. Whereas protecting public safety in the communities they serve is the mayor's highest responsibility. And whereas support for the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding citizens goes hand in hand with keeping guns away from dangerous people. And whereas mayors and law enforcement officers know their communities best and are most familiar with local criminal activity and how to address it and are best positioned to understand how to keep their citizens safe. And whereas in January 2013, Haja Pendleton, a teenager who marched in President Obama's second inaugural parade was tragically shot and killed just weeks later, should be now celebrating her 23rd birthday. And whereas to help Haja and uh, the 100 Americans whose lives were cut short and the countless survivors who are injured by shootings every day, a national coalition of organizations has designated June 5th, 2020 as the first Friday in June as the sixth National Gun Violence Awareness Day. And whereas the idea in was inspired by a group of Haja's friends who have asked classmates to commemorate her life by wearing or orange. They chose this color because hunters wear orange to announce themselves to other hunters when out in the woods. And orange is a color that symbolizes the value of human life. And whereas anyone can join the campaign by pledging to wear orange on June 5th, the first Friday in June, and to raise awareness about gun violence and honor the lives of gun violence victims and survivors. And whereas we renew our commitment to reduce gun violence and pledge to do all we can to keep firearms out of the wrong hands and encourage responsible gun ownership to keep our children safe. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of Borough Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim June 5th, 2020 as National Gun Violence Awareness Day and encourage all citizens to wear orange to support their local community's efforts to prevent the tragic effects of gun violence and to honor and value human lives. I just want to... Uh, show off my uh, pin here. Let me just adjust. So I've got my pin on for, uh, it's an orange pin for Gun Violence Awareness Day and I will be wearing orange next Friday. Teresa, on behalf of the Borough of Madison Council, here is the proclamation. Would you like to say a few words? Yes. There we go. Thank you for this. Put it down for a minute. On behalf of Mom Demands Action for Gun Sense and Every Town for Gun Safety, thank you, Mayor Conley, for issuing this proclamation marking National Gun Violence Awareness Day of 2020. I accept this proclamation while representing hundreds of individuals in Morris County who are working together to reduce gun violence. We applaud the Town Council of Madison for joining us as we remember over 36,000 individuals who died of gun violence in the last year in the United States, and the countless families and friends who live with the impact of having lost a loved one in such a way. As you are well aware, gun violence is a daily occurrence in our country, with 100 individuals dying every day and school shootings happening at an alarming frequency. Now, with COVID-19, our work continues as we bring awareness to guns in domestic violence situations and to children in homes with unsecure guns. But we offer you, Mayor Conley, and the mayor and the members of the town council, our sincerest thank you for honoring and remembering Hadia Pendleton tonight and for joining us in recognizing this American crisis and for being a strong partner in our fight so that the more so that more Americans can live their lives free from gun violence. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresa, for all your work. We now move on to uh, reports from committees. Finance and Borough Clerk, Council President Vitale. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, from the tax collector's office, um, I'm happy to report that we're in good shape with tax collection. The borough issued $17.7 million in property tax bills for the, quarter, the current quarter. It's important to remember that most of that, close to 14 million, goes to the county and the local school board. As of today, we have collected 95.6% of the taxes billed, which is very close to the tax collection rate in the prior years. We therefore will have not have any problems paying the school board for this quarter. From the electric utility, uh, sales from our electric utility are a little bit off, uh, about 7% for the months of April and May. And this is due to uh, Drew University and the corporations like Allergan and Rheology, uh, at, which are not open at this point. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the utility revenues and report back to the council on, on a consistent basis. Good news, the new online utility bill pay platform is now up and running. The system is called iCloud and residents are encouraged to create an account. The system has many features. First of all, you can pay by credit card. You have to, you there will be a transaction fee for a credit card. The system will hold your bank account information so you could set up automatic bill pay. You can receive text alerts when your bill is ready and the system will eventually hold 12 months of invoices for your account. If you are on a budget, you can set up a fixed utility payment every month. Finally, you can decide to go paperless, which is good for the environment. Please visit rosenet.org and set up an account today. It's very easy. If you could order from Amazon, you could set this up in no time at all. I've already set mine up and I'm thrilled to death that um, we, I, my bills can be paid automatically. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, public safety, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, from the police department, uh, although the COVID pandemic is far from over, the police department will resume normal patrol schedules and staffing during the week. Although normal patrol operations will resume, they will still be maintaining their pandemic procedures that were put into operation to protect both the staff and the community. And we want to thank the community for their support. And Chief Datchison is happy to announce the Morris County Police Academy will resume operations on or about June 1st. And the Madison Police and Borough Administration have previously given conditional offers employment, um, which we've budgeted for, to three outstanding alternate uh, recruits uh, prior to the COVID uh, pandemic. The three recruits will be graduating the Police Academy in mid-July and will start their field training with the department immediately thereafter. And the police department also um, just purchased two new Ford hybrid police inceptors. We are one of the first police departments in Northern New Jersey to bring hybrid vehicles into the fleet. The gas mileage will be a 41% uh, improvement over our current police inceptors. In time, these models will save the taxpayer money on fuel costs and Madison is helping to create a smaller carbon footprint. Um, from uh, the master plan committee, we have um, the mass, mass, Madison master plan virtual open house is up and running and is, we extended it through May 31st. So if you want a voice on how our future will be defined, please go to publicinput.com slash Madison M P hyphen open hyphen house. And um, from Open Space um, Trust Fund, tonight we are asking for funds to preserve our town's historic character. In the pipeline, Madison is requesting county and state grant money to preserve the Masonic Lodge on Main Street and restore Hartley Dodge Memorials Plaza. We have begun the process of seeking bids to restore the plaza and we are continuing to formulate plans to restore the east wing of Hartley Dodge Memorial. These two projects alone will require large sums of money from our open space, recreation, and historic preservation trust fund. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And um, community affair, I mean, I'm sorry, pu public works and engineering, Ms. Byrne. 
Thank you, Mayor. From the DPW, the mechanics department continues to perform general vehicle and mechanical servicing and repair. From the parks department, they continue to uh, mow, trim, and weed both the parks and recreation fields, and they install the hanging baskets downtown and have been watering said baskets. Uh, from the roads department, they're filling in potholes around town. They've been picking up white goods and they have built a storage area for stone and materials at DPW. From the sewer department, daily operations and maintenance of lift stations, miscellaneous markouts for PSENG, repaired the catch basins and repaired the alarm system at North Street Pump Station. The recycling center is now open on John Street. The hours of operation are Tuesdays and Friday, 8 a.m. to 1130 and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. From the engineering department, paving of cross gates, east lane and west lane and the annexed portions of Alma, Rachel and Roscoe were, were completed by Schifano Construction. The company also performed curb and property cleanup after the past month of road resurfacing. A dual electric vehicle charging station was energized in the Maple Prospect lot. Pre-construction meeting with Midwest Construction for Glenwild, Albright, and Beverly work are scheduled for this week. They anticipate starting work on Glenwild next week. Um, on water, Joe Med Construction installed services for individual residences on the Highland Avenue water main replacement. They will be returning next week to do trench repair, topsoil, and complete the job. Uh, the Utility Advisory Committee has a meeting slated for June 3rd, and that's the end of my report. I think we uh, lost the tail end of you there, Maureen, but uh, when, just as you wrapped up, you froze for a second. I think we, I think we, we, got, yeah. we got it all, yeah. yep. All right, um, Community Affairs, Mr. Hoover. Thank you, Mayor. For the seniors, since the Senior Shopping Network since launched on March 23rd, it has 130 volunteers and completed 300 shopping trips. Although it's been reported that the request for shopping has declined over the past week or two. MACTA has also launched the Senior Buddy Program to match people who would like to talk with listeners and talkers. That's going a little bit slow. We need to promote that more. From the Director of Business Development, Downtown Development Commission, the Madison, New Jersey, you've heard this before in prior uh, council meetings, but it needs to be said again. The Madison, New Jersey Small Business Recovery Grant Program has been created by the Madison Main Street Foundation and Downtown Development Commission with the support of the Madison Area Chamber of Commerce to mitigate the severe economic damage caused by the global COVID-19 pandemic to our beloved local business community. A GoFundMe campaign titled Help the Madison, New Jersey Small Business Community Recover is, is live now. The goal is to raise a minimum of $200,000. Madison Main Street Foundation, registered 501c3, has matched the first $50,000 on a one-to-one -one basis. We are getting closer to our goal of $200,000 and have raised over $153,000 to date. The fundraising ends May 31st, which is why I'm reading this because it's so important. May 31st is only a couple of days away. Please consider making a donation. All contributions are tax deductible. For those who would prefer to send a check, here are the instructions. Please send a check payable to the Madison Main Street Foundation and mail it to Madison Main Street Foundation, Hartley Dodge Memorial Building, 50 Kings Road, Madison. May Day in Madison has been rescheduled to the weekend of June 13th to 14th. Fingers crossed. The new process of t-shirt contest winner will be announced later this evening. Donations are still being requested to help defray the cost of the flower baskets, which will be hung as usual downtown. And the Madison Farmers Market will open Thursday, June 11th. Fingers crossed. Contracts have been sent to vendors. Social distancing and other new health and safety procedures will be instituted as required. They will run through November 19th. The market is relocating to Dodge Field. Hours will remain the same, two o'clock to seven o'clock. From the Chamber of Commerce, the fire extinguisher program, inspection program, is scheduled for Tuesday, June 9th, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. 
the Madison Community Arts Center. There will be American Red Cross Blood Drive at the Arts Center on Tuesday, June 2nd from 2 to 7 p.m. I know I'm registered to do it, and I know the mayor is too. So please sign up to do it. The new MACA website continues to evolve. A few more musicians have been added to the featured artists. There is also a donate button to benefit the Madison Small Businesses at www.madisonartsnj.org. Discussions are being held to explore presenting outdoor concerts during this current situation, including drive-in concerts at one of the larger borough facilities, for example, the MRC, community pool, or the high school. From the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts, the museum remains closed to visitors during this pandemic, awaiting the governor's guidelines on reopening. Even at that time, visitors will be limited. A plan has been prepared that includes heavy cleaning, hand sanitizing stanchions, plexiglass at the front desk, and other measures. Field trips will be held for some time, and programs have been revised for schools to the new digital platform. In the meantime, the staff is working remotely to continue with some ongoing restoration projects. The council will consider the Madison Open Space recommendation to match a grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust for a feasibility study to restore part of the building's lower level, which is in, inundated with water. Without the thousands of school kids coming to the museum this spring, usually the busiest season, the museum is looking into ideas and proposals to use the education annex for community projects or partner with other organizations that need temporary space. The Recreation Advisory Committee. The Madison Area YMCA has requested to use the Lucy D. Fields for their summer camp program subject to state approval. All recreation department programs remain suspended until further notice. All spring season programs have been officially canceled and the borough fields remain closed. Parks, however, are open for passive recreation. Six new park benches have been purchased as our facility amenities continue to be upgraded. These benches are made from recycled materials. Additionally, the installation of new safety netting at the MRC has been completed. True Green will be returning to perform additional seating at the field and further address fair or worn spots on playing services. The fall schedule has been distributed to sporting groups. Additional events may be added once further guidance on resuming activities becomes clear. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And the health, Ms. Cohen. First, before I get to the main health report, a shout out to Marlene Dolan for leading the way again as the health department was recognized um, as part of the influenza honor roll for 1920 for superb um, vaccinations and getting the word out there about vaccines. Um, we were one of seven health departments in the state that received this recognition. Uh, so kudos, Marlene. On to the health report. The trends locally and in the northern part of the state continue to go in the right direction. New hospitalizations, patients in the ICU, and those requiring the use of a ventilator have all steadily declined. As a result, we've seen some of the stay-at-home order relax, and non-essential retail businesses are now able to join restaurants for curbside pickup. Along with the reopening of parks and other outdoor recreational businesses, we are moving through phase one of the reopening plan. As additional needs are identified and new state guidance is issued, the Madison Health Department will continue to work with our partners to ensure continued safe reopening throughout the borough. For instance, our health officer, Mike Fitzpatrick, worked to develop guidelines for the Madison Farmers Market set to open June 11th. As of today, Madison reports 133 total cases of COVID-19, up only five cases since our last council meeting. 55 of those are associated with long-term care facilities. After following up with those who tested positive early in the pandemic, only 50 of the 133 remain open and are still being monitored by the health department. Shortly after our last council meeting, a directive requiring universal and ongoing testing for residents and staff of long-term care facilities was issued by the state. This includes individuals who are asymptomatic. Madison Health Department continues to work with long-term care facilities to ensure that they are in compliance with this directive. It is important to note that as the test results of the first wave of required testing becomes available, we may see a slight increase in our overall case count. As far as the testing for the general population, testing capacity is largely not an issue in Madison or the greater Morris County area. Between the county site at the County College of Morris, independent primary care physicians, urgent care centers, and our large health groups like Atlantic Health and Summit Medical Group, there are many places to receive a free or low cost test. As we transition to the next phase of reopening, the state health department is encouraging getting a test even if you're asymptomatic. 
This is especially true if you've been out of the house regularly for an essential job or other activities that limited your ability to stay home. And for some reminders, last time I reminded residents that they should not delay seeking emergency medical attention, especially when showing signs of a heart attack or stroke. This week, the Madison Health Department would like to take an opportunity to remind those with children who may be due for a regularly scheduled childhood vaccination or booster to not wait. Doctors' offices are more than capable of providing these services without any risk to patients. Finally, the reminders would have become my regular closing during the pandemic. Still remain at home when you can. When you are away from home, practice social distancing. Keep at least six feet from people outside your household. When inside essential businesses, wear a face covering. A face covering around your chin protects no one. Face covering should cover both the nose and mouth. If you choose to wear gloves when shopping or in other locations, they should be changed often, including when changing tasks or locations. Gloves and disposable masks should be placed in trash bins and not discarded along sidewalks or in parking lots. Wash your hands often with soap and water, using hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when soap is not available. Refrain from touching your face. If you feel unwell, stay home. Further isolate yourself from other members of your household and contact your doctor. In the event of a true medical emergency, call 911. While you are physically distant from your friends and extended family, stay connected and check on those around you via phone, video chat, or text message. This is especially true for those you know living alone or who may be elderly. Continue to enjoy the outdoors and fresh air while you can, while, when you can, while walking, jogging, or biking in your neighborhood, follow the rules of the road, but also maintain social distancing even well beyond six feet if you can. Parents, continue to set a good example for our younger generation on social distancing and explain to your children the importance of it when they might be otherwise out of the home. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And uh, utilities, Ms. Ehrlich. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm excited to report that uh, for the electric department, um, they assisted our multi-talented borough construction official, Russ Brown, in wiring the new charging station in the Kings Road parking lot for electric vehicle charging. So the station is now up and running and I think this is an exciting milestone for energy transformation in Madison. We look forward to more charging stations coming online soon. The electric department is continuing to install LED lights on Central Avenue and Ridgedale Avenue, as well as repairing street light outages throughout town based on a list that was generated by the police department. Over the last two weeks, the standby electric crew was called out three times to restore a tripped fuse, remove a large tree limb from overhead wires, and to secure telecom wires that had been taken down by a truck. The department also replaced two utility poles that had been aging or damaged. From the water department, the water main reconstruction project of uh, Highland Avenue from Britton Street to Rosedale Avenue is on schedule. The new eight inch water main and fire hydrant have been installed and tested. And after new water services are installed to customers' homes, the final connection of the new main at the intersection of Highland Avenue and Britton Street will complete this construction. Lastly, the Cole Park decorative fountain has been turned on for the season. And I thought it was notable that this fountain uses recycled water for its operation. So a sign of summer on this way. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any communications or petitions? None received, so we will move on to our first invitations for discussion. Um, this is a opportunity for uh, the public to make questions or comments on discussion items on the agenda or our resolutions. There'll be a, another time later in the meeting when you can uh, uh, make comments on any other subject. So again, this is a one that is limited for topics. And if you're online, you'll be able to raise your hand by clicking the hand. If you're connecting by phone, you'll hit star nine. Note that for security reasons, we will not recognize anyone listed as anonymous or without a, uh, if they're on phone without their phone number identified. When you are recognized and told that you are muted, your first words must be your name and address. Before starting any comments, failure to do so may result in you being muted or disconnected. And in, as usual, please keep your comments to three minutes or less, but we will give you a one minute grace period. But, um, and if you have questions, so, uh, so as not to take away from your time, we will capture those questions and, and answer those after you finish. And to uh, cover the agenda items that you could comment on, we'll be talking about sidewalk dining 
sidewalk sales, and also uh, outdoor fitness classes. We will be talking about the open space trust fund requests that uh, Ostry covered a little bit. We're also uh, talking about farmers market and May Day and the upcoming, uh, then the upcoming primary election that has been shifted to July. Uh, and these are the following resolutions that I will cover now. It'll be part of the consent agenda so you understand and you can uh, comment on them. Hold on just a second. Resolution 145 is appointment of John Cerruti to the summer intern position in the Public Works Department at $12 an hour. All the appointments of uh, summer interns are contingent on being able to work with uh, um, any, rest any restrictions. And so if there are restrictions in place, they may not be uh, put on the job. Resolution 146 is appointing Tom Metter to the uh, Public Safety Tele Telecommunications Officer, and that's uh, formerly known as Dispatch, salary of $35,000, full-time position. Uh, resolution 147 is authorizing settlement and release agreement with Vince Auto Sales uh, and Kelly Electric. That was related to fire code violation. Resolution 148 is establishing uh, policy for the Jacob Henry Perkins Trust. And you've heard us um, provide uh, grants from this trust. And so now we have a, a, a guiding uh, um, policy for that. Uh, resolution 149 is authorized in the farmer's market for 2020, which you'll be hearing about shortly. Resolution 150, resolution authorizing use of Lucy D. Fields for the, the Madison area YMCA for this summer day camp. And that is uh, contingent on state allowing uh, camps to um, happen. Resolution 151, which we'll be hearing about shortly, is uh, amending chapter... Uh, on sidewalk dining licenses. Resolution 152 is authorizing submission of it pays to plug in grant application for electric vehicle charging station. Resolution um, 153 is authorizing the sidewalk sales. You'll be hearing about that shortly. Resolution 154 is authorizing the historic uh, Trust Fund Grant Application for Plans and Specifications for Restoration of the Madison Masonic Lodge. And we'll hear about that. Resolution uh, 155 is Submission of Historic Trust Grant for Partly Dodge Memorial in the Plaza. Resolution 156 is authorizing the uh, public, work, uh, public parks and fields for um, local exercise and fitness businesses. Uh, you'll hear about that shortly. Resolution 157 is awarding the contract to Cephalian Sun for $503,448 for reconstruction of Burnett Road. And this is funded through ordinances one and six, 2020. Resolution 158 is appointing or ratifying the appointment of Jessica Vogel to summer intern position for the electric utility department at $12 an hour. And resolution 159 is appointing Sandra Emmerich to the position of acting personnel director and Kevin O'Keefe to acting personnel a purchasing agent. So you may comment on any of those resolutions or the agenda items I just outlined. Please raise your hand or hit star nine if you would like to comment. Seeing none, we close this part of the meeting. And we now move on to uh, agenda discussions. And the first one is related again to sidewalk dining uh, sidewalk sales and outdoor fitness. And uh, I'll, I'll tee it up. We also have Lisa available if she to, to provide some more information on this. But these are two of these three resolutions are forward thinking. One is uh, as soon as we clarify some of the guidelines could be put in place immediately. Uh, the out, uh, outdoor dining, this is to expand the outdoor dining on the sidewalks to make it easier for businesses. Mm -hmm. Uh, we anticipate that when they, we move to the next phase statewide in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, that uh, outdoor dining or dining will be limited to outdoors initially. And it will be required to have uh, social distancing. So that limits the storefront area. So a couple of things that are key with this is one, allows businesses to expand in front of neighboring businesses with permission of that business and property owner. It uh, will also uh, waives the uh, fees for this year. Um, there still will be a permit process in place. 
uh, but it will waive the uh, fees for this year. Uh, and one of, another thing we're working on with outdoor dining is we have um, had a meeting yesterday. Uh, Lisa Ellis has been working very hard with the expansion of uh, outdoor dining on borough property, or uh, so this would be streets and or um, parking lots, and this would allow some more additional space. We will have a, um, rather than go into the areas right now, we'll be having a presentation at our next meeting with a uh, resolution to approve those spaces, and that would provide additional space. And I think that is covers it for the outdoor dining. Um, and again, we, even though we're doing the resolution tonight, the state has not authorized this, so it will not take effect until we have uh, the ability to do, to do it. Um, the, the other thing related to um, the outdoor dining is, or two more things out related to it, if if a uh, restaurant owns their own parking lot and has required parking based on their zoning or, or use approval, they temporarily can convert some of that parking into um, uh, outdoor dining. Uh, this will allow, we obviously, without full use of um, dining spaces, there'll be plenty of parking in town, so this will give them some more outdoor space. And then service of alcohol brev beverages, um, there's a two-step process typically with uh, licensed establishments. One is they get ABC approval and number two get approval from the borough of Madison. This will streamline it so if they have ABC approval and are permitted to do out service that will allow them to do that. Um, the sidewalk sales item is you know, we traditionally you'll remember like such as the day of the Little League Parade or various times during the summer we will authorize uh, sidewalk sales where um, stores can put their merchandise out in front. And so the goal here is to do that up front. And so as soon as that is permitted by the state, we would have uh, sidewalk sales allowed. Of course, with all of these, it will be all fall in with the guidelines provided by the state and our local health department to make sure people are safe. And we are getting clarification related to, um, uh, there has been, um, Articles about uh, fitness, uh, outdoor fitness is now permitted within the guideline of 25 people or less. Uh, a very uh, outlined area as far as where the um, participants will be to protect the uh, social distancing. The fact that if there's any um, use of um, equipment, they have to bring their own equipment. It cannot be shared. So our goal here is once we've finalized the um, clarification on the guidelines is any brick or mortar fitness facility in a fitness or wellness facility in Madison can get approval to use our space. They would go through the direct director on this and would also be providing us with a certificate of insurance and the permit would include the guidelines uh, by the uh, CDC and the state. Um, any questions or comments on that? All right. So we, or Deb, Deb, go ahead, sorry. Just real quick, um, two quick things. On the sidewalk sales, just so people know, the Board of Health did discuss it a little bit last night and has sent over some recommendations of how it might be able to be, what, sorry, what steps might be able to be taken to help ensure safety as people are, you know, looking at things on racks. And then the only question I have on the, the rec thing outside, which I'm all for, I think it's great, is there going to be a way so that one person with the permit doesn't end up, you don't have the same person there all day so that different gyms and trainers can help various people depending on what's going on. They can't monopolize it for 12 hours. Yes, that's a good, good question. And uh, part of it would be um, we, we may start the process um, as quickly as possible, but delay the uh, utilization, um, you know, at about a, a week or whatever, just so we can sort through all the applications and give the approvals. Uh, Zach Ellis, our recreation director, will sort through that. But we, yeah, we don't want um, uh, one organization to dominate uh, one facility. Um, and uh, just a reminder with the sidewalk sales re related to Deb's com comments that also that uh, right now curbside pickup is allowed. So you may see stores with a table out front. They would not, you cannot go up to a table and order anything 
right now. If you have placed the order ahead of time, you can go up to that table and pick it up or they can bring it out to the uh, curb to you. So please, uh, uh, in the public, don't um, put any uh, retail establishment in an awkward position by trying to order things by at the doorway. Any other questions or comments? Can I, um, I, I just wanted to tell Lisa, I mean, she's done a great job and, you know, um, and the um, businesses downtown should really uh, be very thankful that uh, she's come up with these creative thoughts. Uh, um, I just want to make one comment. I, I, there's going to be a lot of coordination because if you're going to have sidewalk dining and then, you know, people are going to start going out for lunch or for, a, you know, brunch or, or whatever, and then you're going to have sidewalk uh, sales at the same time. You know, I, I, I think it's going to take some coordination, uh, Lisa, to make sure that everybody isn't kind of bumping into each other. You know, so yeah. um, oh, saying the internet is unstable yep, right now. Yeah, for sure. Can you still hear me? Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, you know, I, I just, um, you know, I, I like the thoughts of all of this happening, but you know, I, I don't want people bumping into each other. You know, um, either. You know, the, the sidewalk sales. You know, people like. Uh, statements, you know, is so close to a restaurant and whatever. So, um, I, you know, I, I feel bad for you because it's yep. going to take a lot of coordination, but um, certainly, you know, thank you for all of this. Um, I would also like to make one comment about the sidewalk dining is in, in part of the old ordinance, I believe that there is mention of the fact that if you are using sidewalk uh, dining now and you have a permit for it, um, we have to send out a reminder that, you know, the, the sidewalks have to be kind of cleaned up. You know, there's water available on each one of those uh, buildings, I think, at this point. And, um, and just a reminder that, you know, the sidewalks really need to be uh, cleaned. And to allow people to, to have a walking pattern, you know, and not come out so far so that people can't walk up and down Main Street, uh, especially on, on the one side where, um, you know, 54 Main is, which is, you know, a lot, a lot wider, you know, people are walking now, they're jogging, you know, and uh, people are out with strollers, and you know, we see it more and more, and I think that uh, we're, we're at a stage that we're going to probably always see it, so, I mean, if we, we could just kind of remind them of those two things, I think it, um, you know, would be uh, kind of helpful. So thank you for all your hard work. That was yes, good. And, and to be I will make sure of it, Carmela. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Th thank you, Lisa and uh, Carmela. Um, and now my connection's unstable. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the permit yeah. applicant, even though there will be waiving of fees, it still will not uh, take away the uh, permit application. And so uh, we will be uh, making sure that all those are outlined. We don't want to solve one problem and create a, uh, another problem in the, uh, in, the, in the process. All right, we're just double checking my connection, which is blinking, so. For sure not. All right. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Lisa, did you have anything more to add? Uh, no, I just wanted to assure, assure everyone that, uh, you know, I will personally monitor um, a lot of this and work with fire, health, and, and the police department to make sure this all goes as smoothly as possible, you know, once, once we get the okay to go forward. Thank you. And again, we have these uh, three resolutions as I outlined. Um, in, in the consent agenda. So moving on to open space trust fund requests, Ostry. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the open space uh, recreation and historic preservation committee met to hear two applications. The first was from the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts uh, for a matching grant um, from the open space trust fund. And that would be $10,000 to match a New Jersey historic trust grant that they've applied for. Um, 
this grant is to develop a feasibility study with construction documents for the design of a new visible collection storage facility in the lower level of the historic James Library building. So they're just basically asking to restore what was there, which is part of the historic fabric of the building. Um, mold has been an issue, but that has been um, remediated or is being remediated by both the borough and the museum people. Um, that was an agreed upon um, decision. And um, so this is part of this request supports the continued historic preservation of the James Library building as outlined in their 2012 preservation plan. And um, Deb Starker, um, the museum director, she brought all that information. She brought the preservation um, uh, plan and, and, and showed us where you know it was. So this is all part and parcel of keeping this historic building going. And um, the Open Space Committee recommends that the council approve the amount of $10,000. Then the other um, grant is for um, funds to replace the deteriorating fence at the Luke Miller House. The fence is part of the historic easement um, that was placed on the Luke Miller House. And um, the, it, what we're asking you to approve up to $9,581 from the Open Space Trust Fund. Um, the owner of the property, it's, it's, it's a the, the fence is on both borough property and the owner of Luke Miller's property. So we are sharing the expenses 50-50. So he will be contributing the same amount of money. The fence is part of the historic character of the Luke Miller property. The New Jersey Historic Trust had to approve the, the, um, the fence and the fence design. And um, so the committee also recommends that the council approve this amount of money to repair the uh, fence. Uh, Carmela noted to me that um, in the application, there was mentioned that the ash tree, which is on borough property, might be a problem for the, uh, to, in placing the, um, the fence. But uh, Mr. Crimmins, the owner of Luke Miller property, assured me that uh, he would not do anything without um, the advice and the consent of the Shade Tree Management Board and the Arborist and Ken O'Brien. Okay, any questions? Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? And uh, we also, uh, Deb Stocker, Starker is uh, in the audience in case we have uh, need any input from the museum. Looks like we are good. So th these are ordinances 16 and 17, which are listed for introduction. Okay. We'll move on to uh, farmer's market and May Day. Lisa. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was asked to give a, a brief update on what's going on with May Day and the farmers market for this year. When the um, when we were forced to close down because of the pandemic in mid March, we were just gearing up for May Day. Uh, so obviously, our plans had to change and and change dramatically. But we are are soldiering through this and tonight we can announce our uh, 2020 t-shirt art contest winner. Um, Michael, next slide, please. Hello? <laughs> okay. It's I, loading. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. We're having some, A little delay. I'm having some it technical little difficulties little. this evening. But yeah, so anyway, so proud to announce the winner, uh, Daphne Rodas, of, um, who was an eighth grader in at Madison Junior School. Uh, we opened the contest up to the middle school this year, and um, we have her drawing as the winning drawing. She will receive a $100 gift certificate um, provided by the DDC and Provident Bank together. Um, so she will be informed of that tomorrow. The, it's not technically a t-shirt art contest winner this year because of reduced donations and having to adjust on the fly here a little bit. We are not going to print uh, a thousand t-shirts. 
we are going to instead use her design on a sign um, that will mark the various sites for our new May Day, the weekend of June 13 and 14. Next slide, please. This week, we will be sending out a sign up genius. The idea is to create a bunch of um, smaller scale projects that, be, that can be done by family groups, small groups of friends. Um, when I wrote this, the recommendation was 10 or less, but we know it's moved up to 25, but I, I still think that 10 is probably more appropriate for the, the scale of the projects, but obviously there's flexibility there. Um, once the Sign Up Genius is distributed to our previous volunteer list, and circulated um, on the on social media, et cetera. We are hoping to get every you know projects signed up for, and then the idea is that prior to that Saturday and Sunday, DPW will deliver mulch to the sites. I will share um, what needs to be done at each site with the volunteers. The work will be done at um, the group's leisure over that weekend. Um, I, I think it will work. It, it's a it's a new it's a little bit of a new world, but we're going to give it a go. Um, so the the signs that will be located will have uh, this beautiful artwork on one side, and on the other will be uh, the, our donors that um, were able to contribute beforehand. Um, or in, we've still gotten a few along the way, will be recognized on the rear of that sign. So it's a little bit different. Um, you know, as I said at the DDC meeting, I liked it the way it was, but we're going to uh, adjust and make the best of it. Uh, anybody have any questions on May Day itself? Okay, nope. then I can move on to... to yeah. As we say, if you I need challenging a times are creative solutions. So this is a good one. John, go ahead. <laughs> I just needed to <laughs> unmute myself. Could you explain to me again about why we're not doing t-shirts? Um, the expense, John. The, uh, they, are, they typically will cost us over $4,000, um, where the, and the flower baskets cost upwards of probably closer to $12,000 this year. Today, we've only um, gotten in about $4,000 worth of donations, and also the timing on printing, et cetera. Um, so we'll, we'll honor this young lady uh, on social media, on the signs, et cetera. Um, and as we learned last year, from the lovely lady who was making bags out of the t-shirts at the farmer's market, you know, the more T-shirts you put out into the, um, it's not exactly a great thing for the environment um, to print a thousand T-shirts under any circumstances, but probably especially not uh, now. Um, it's just something we're gonna have to forego this year. And it would be nice if possible, maybe we can recognize her at the next uh, council meeting. Absolutely, um, yeah. And and I think the, the other challenge you have, Lisa, with the shirts is, you know, you, you can pretty much count on the, in the traditional way, how many people would sign up. We, we, we don't know exactly what, you know, we, I'm sure we we'll don't. have a nice turnout, but I, I'm guessing it'll be uh, not quite the same number. As a fraction. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I, we can, I think so too. If there's no other questions on uh, May Day, we'll move on to uh, Farmer's Market. Okay. So the intent all along was to relocate the market to Dodge Field this season for a variety of reasons, but primarily because of the safety concerns um, associated with the market being on Central Ave between Main Street and Cook. The intersection between Cook, Elmer, and Central Ave is a challenge on a good day. Um, on a market day, it was especially challenging. Um, and, you know, it, it also the market was there. We had a good run four years there. But, um, I, you know, we were starting to hear the, some complaints from the merchants, et cetera. And, and we don't, we want to be a good neighbor wherever we are. Um, the, 
Dodge Field will actually turn out to be fortuitous because it will allow us the space to spread out the vendors um, in this instance where in this world of social distancing where we can, um, you know, we will have the room now to do that. It's uh, It'll be a much safer location. There's adequate parking across the street at the at Central Avenue School uh, and all on street locations in the area. Um, and the the track actually forms a natural path uh, around which to align the vendors. Um, so I think from the health department perspective, and it, it, this will work well. Originally, we were going to concentrate the vendors down at the east end by the playground, but now, given COVID-19, we're going to have to we're going to have to spread out and probably use the whole field. But as I've assured the rec director, um, there will be no damage to the field. We will I'll work with DPW to make sure that we, if we need temporary snow fencing, et cetera, to protect the field, we will absolutely do that. We, the idea is just to use the perimeter of the field, like the 10, like about 10 feet, no more around the perimeter and use some of the dead space area behind the backstop, um, et cetera, to spread the vendors out in a way that makes sense. I'll work with the health department on the setup and uh, recreation and parks advisory, of course, to uh, make sure this works for everybody. I think, and I really want it to still be a great, um, pleasant and, and efficient experience for the shoppers. Next slide. I can, I'm not going to read all of this. These are the recommendations that we shared um, and that will be continue to be shared through the market, through signage, et cetera. These were developed by the Madison Health Department. Um, and, uh, you know, there are some obvious things. The one, you know, no demonstrations, no dogs, hand, san hand sanitizers um, everywhere, um, point of uh, different payment methods, uh, everything kind of low touch, um, uh, masks will be required, um, and, you know, just pretty much the obvious stuff that we're all living with now on a daily basis anyway. Um, next slide, please. This, these were the guidelines to the vendors, which pretty much echo the same as the general guidelines. Um, we are getting, I'm getting a really good response from our usual vendors and I've already picked up one or two new ones. So I'm happy about that because I wasn't, I was a little worried about what the turnout will be. So I'm hoping that, you know, we will make another thing we will absolutely make the best of and hope it's a great experience for everybody. But, you know, safety is our absolute priority. And the health department has pledged to help us all along the way. And we are, um, you know, onward and upward. I don't really have, you know, that that's it in a nutshell, uh, but I will answer any questions. So a, a couple of things that, uh, for everyone to know, um, some may have already visited. Summit uh, has been running their farmer's market for a couple of weeks and with very similar guidelines. And um, I have not been there personally, but I've heard that it is uh, working fairly fairly well, uh, such as the one way, everyone wearing masks and, and so on. The other is the importance of the uh, farmer's market. You know, we, we all are um, struggling in, in this time and uh, New Jersey, we are the garden state and we'd love to get that produce from our farms to our homes. And so this is a great thing that yeah, we're absolutely. able to continue to do. So thank you, Lisa, for all your work. Yes. Any questions mm -hmm. or comments from council members? Yeah, Maureen? Yes, Maureen. Thanks. So I noticed, Lisa, on the previous uh, screen, you said you were going to be limiting it to two members of a household. How is that going to work with moms and their kids. Yeah, that, you know, that, that's a, we, a lot of these are where practical, you know, it's the same thing every time I go into King's, the King's, King's supermarket where they say 
no, please make sure only one person from your household shops here. Um, you know, and that has to do with contact tracing and the ability to, you know, know where everybody is. And, and I understand that, but, it, um, you know, it, the market will definitely be less of a social experience than it has in the past. We won't be able to have, you know, we're still, we'll see how the season goes as far as live music, but there won't be the Adirondack chairs. There won't be the tables for kids activities. That's unfortunately a, a factor of the, of the situation we're living in. Um, so, but I, I still want it to be as pleasant a uh, shopping experience, at least as possible. So if, if a mother comes in with three kids, she's not going to be chased away at, at the gate. <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've actually been to the Summit Market on Sundays, and it is, it's working. Very good. Any other questions or comments? All right, we are looking forward to this. Again, we have the resolution to approve the uh, market on the consent agenda and looking forward to its operations. And uh, as always, thanks for all, all of your work, Lisa, on that. Now we'll uh, bring up our clerk, and we'll talk about the primary election. Liz? Okay, hey, good evening. I just wanted to provide some information to council and our residents, of course, about the upcoming primary election. Governor Murphy has signed an executive order moving the primary election from June 2nd until Tuesday, July the 7th. The um, July 7th primary will be conducted primarily by vote in mail-in ballots, vote by mail ballots. All active registered Republican and Democratic voters will automatically receive their vote by mail ballot, a postage paid ba uh, ballot for you to send back to um, the county. All unaffiliated voters will receive a special vote by mail application, which requires them to complete the application and select a party, because this is a party primary election, not a general. Each municipality will have one consolidated polling location and any voter who appears at the polling location on election day will vote on a, a provisional ballot, except for voters with disabilities who can vote on ADA accessible machines. The vote by mail ballots cannot be dropped off at the polling location on election day, but mail-in ballots um, are prepaid postage and there will be drop boxes around the county. Right now there's five different um, Dropbox areas planned throughout uh, Mars County and Madison is one of those. And just keep in mind, if you do come to the polling location, the social distancing between poll workers and voters will be maintained. Any other questions, please, um, I don't know if council has any questions, but if the residents have any questions, please contact the clerk's office. We'll be happy to help you. So any questions or comments from uh, council? When are they being mailed out? The end of the month? Uh, right now, right. The county doesn't have a date, but um, I believe it's after uh, June 15th. June 15th is the last day to register. They're typically mailed out after that. And uh, Rachel? I just want to thank Ms. Osborne for providing this information and just take a moment to say that um, this is a great way to reach all voters and that um, all mail-in ballots are always counted. I know there's sometimes a, you know, a rumor or a popular myth that mail-in ballots are only counted if the election is close. That is not true. And all residents and voters should know that their ballot will be counted. Um, so it's, it's important to get out to vote and I encourage everyone to do so for this primary election. Thank you, very, very good to share. Any other questions or comments? All right. It's what it is. We will uh, move on to ordinance for hearing. Will the clerk please read the statement? The ordinance schedule for hearing was introduced by title and passed on first reading at the regular meeting of council held on May the 11th, 2020. It was posted and filed according to law and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. I call an ordinance 50. 15-2020 for a second reading, ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $12,500 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of new firefighter turnout gear. 
I open the hearing for Ordinance 15-2020. Anyone in the public wishing to comment on this ordinance, please raise your hand by clicking the hand or hit star nine if you're on the phone. Seeing none, we close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 15-2020. I second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. All right, I, de I declare ordinance 15-2020 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there of the newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And uh, we are now, oh, Liz, if you could unmute yourself again, because we're back to go again. Okay. Thank you. All right, we are uh, now moving on to the invitations for discussion number two. This is when the public may comment on any topic. Again, the same rules are uh, in, in place here, that if you're online, raise your hand by clicking the hand. And if you're on the phone, you can be recognized by hitting star nine. And we will not recognize anyone who is listed as anonymous or a, uh, uh, we can't recognize a call without a phone number identified. And when you are recognized and unmuted, you must state your name and address before making any comments. Failure to do so may result in you being muted or disconnected. You have three minutes to, uh, we encourage you to keep your comments to three minutes, but we'll allow you a one minute grace and ask you to stop at four. And if you have questions, we'll capture those questions and answer them at the end of your comment period. Anyone wishing to comment, please raise your hand or hit star nine. Seeing none, we uh, close the, this part of the meeting and we move on to introduction of ordinance. Will the clerk please read the statement. This ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for June the 22nd, 2020. All we published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. And just a reminder, the hearing date is June 22nd due to the fact that we are meeting on Wednesday. We don't have the requisite time in between meetings to have it at our next meeting. I call up ordinance 16-2020 for first reading and ask the clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $9,581 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund as matching funds for replacement of the Luke Miller House fence. Mayor, I move Ordinance 16-2020. A second. Any council discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Ordinance 17-2020. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $10,000 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund for matching funds for a feasibility study and construction documents at the Museum of Early Trades and Crafts. Mayor, I move Ordinance 17-2020. Second. Any, council, any further discussion by the council? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. We now move on to consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Uh, Mayor, I move resolution 145-2020 to resolution 159-2020. Second. Any council discussion or any resolutions that need to be pulled? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes to all, but I abstain from R-150. Which is uh, Madison Area YMCA Summer Camp Program. Correct. Thank you, Mayor. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohn? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. Thank you. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Will the clerk please read the voucher registry? 
current fund, we have $6,672,765.40. The general capital fund, $1,430.70. The electric operating fund, $545,306.05. The electric capital fund, $2,400. Water operating fund, $38,462.42. And the trust, $11,664.29. The total is $7,272,028.86. Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ms. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Ehrlich? Yes. And there is no new business. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all and be well. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see everyone. Bye. Bye, y'all.